Today we are diving into the captivating evolution of tarantulas, from ancient ancestors to the diverse species that we know today. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Our story begins over 300 million years ago in the Carboniferous period, sometimes referred to as the Age of Invertebrates. Picture a world dominated by giant ferns and giant arachnids weaving their way into history. The Carboniferous period, spanning from approximately 359 to 299 million years ago, was a geological epoch known for its lush forests, diverse marine life, significant climate changes, and the landmass Pangaea. One of the defining features of the Carboniferous was the proliferation of giant swampy forests, primarily composed of club mosses, horsetails, ferns, and early tree-like plants. This led to very high oxygen levels, which in turn allowed the arthropods to reach insane sizes. Arachnids, including early forms resembling spiders, became more prevalent during this period. Fossil evidence revealed tarantula-like spiders had early ancestors, leaving behind traces of silk and body impressions. Insects also underwent a remarkable diversification, with some reaching impressive sizes like the Arthropleura, which was a giant millipede-like creature reaching over 8 feet in length. The Carboniferous marked a crucial phase in the evolution of vertebrates. Amphibians, the first animals capable of living both in water and on land, became widespread. They thrived in the swampy environments, taking advantage of the abundant invertebrates. Your Aranidia are considered some of the earliest representatives of the arachnid class, which includes spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. It's important to note that the evolution of spiders is a complex process, and the Uranidia are just one group that represents early stages in spider evolution. Fossil evidence suggests that Uranidia lived on land and had simple spinnerets for silk production. This is in contrast to some of the other early arachnids that had more aquatic lifestyles. Fossils of Uranidia have been found in different parts of the world, including Japan, Scotland, and New York and they provide valuable insights into the early stages of spider evolution. Now let's fast forward to the Mesozoic era, about 200 million years ago. While the specifics are more than a little bit fuzzy, this period definitely saw the diversification of spiders. Relatives of the tarantula were likely part of this evolutionary explosion, adapting to the changing landscapes right along dinosaurs and other ancient creatures. The Mesozoic Era, often referred to as the Age of Reptiles, spanned approximately 180 million years, from about 252 to 66 million years ago. It is subdivided into three major periods we all remember from elementary school, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Crustaceous. This is also when the supercontinent Pangaea began to break apart leading to the formation of separate land masses and influencing the distribution of species. Fossil records of spiders from this time are very sparse, in no small part because spiders, like many arachnids, have soft bodies that decompose rapidly after death. Soft tissues are less likely to be preserved as fossils compared to hard structures like bones or shells. Also, many spiders live in environments that are not conducive to fossilization. Forests and other terrestrial habitats may not provide the right conditions for the preservation of spider remains. Fossilization requires specific conditions such as rapid burial and the presence of minerals that can replace the organic material over time. Despite these challenges, some spider fossils have been discovered, especially in amber deposits. You remember Jurassic Park? Amber is a fossilized tree resin that can trap and preserve small organisms, including spiders, in remarkable detail. These amber fossils provide valuable insights into the ancient diversity and morphology of spiders. Additionally, some spider fossils have been found in sediments, but they are generally less common compared to fossils of organisms with hard exoskeletons or bones. 
Ancient tarantulas first emerged in the piece of land now considered the Americas about 120 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. At this time, South America would have been attached to Africa, India, and Australia as part of the Gondwana supercontinent. These spiders ultimately reached their present destinations due to continental drift, with a few interesting departures. Researchers were able to establish two separate lineages of tarantulas that diverged on the Indian subcontinent before it crashed into Asia. With one lineage being predominantly ground-dwelling, like Chilobrachis, and the other predominantly arboreal, like Postlotheria. They found that these lineages colonized Asia about 20 million years apart. Surprisingly, the first group that reached Asia also managed to cross the Wallace Line, which is a fascinating concept in biogeography. Named after the 19th century naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace, it is an imaginary border that separates the ecozones of Asia and Australia. Wallace noticed distinct differences in the animal species on either side of the line during his travels in the Malay Archipelago. To the west of the Wallace Line, which passes between Bali and Lombok, the fauna is more similar to that of Asia, while to the east, the fauna is more akin to Australia. The division is not only based on geography, but also on the types of species found, particularly mammals and birds. After the asteroid-induced dinosaur downfall about 65 million years ago, tarantulas continued their evolutionary journey. They adapted to various environments, developing unique traits and behaviors. This era laid the groundwork for the modern diversity that we know today. After the Mesozoic era, the Cenozoic era began. This era commenced around 66 million years ago and continues to the present day. The Cenozoic is often referred to as the Age of Mammals. Because of the significant diversification and dominance of mammalian life forms. And to this day, tarantulas can still be found around the Earth because of, or despite of, some of their more primitive aspects. One notable primitive feature is the vertical movement of tarantula fangs. In tarantulas, the fangs move up and down, a trait considered more primitive. In more advanced spiders, the fangs move horizontally, allowing for more efficient prey capture. Tarantulas typically have eight simple eyes arranged in two rows. While their arrangement is effective, it is considered primitive compared to the more complex eye arrangements found in some advanced spider groups. Tarantulas, like other megalomorph spiders, have book lungs, which are respiratory organs. Book lungs are considered a more primitive respiratory structure compared to the tracheal system found in many more advanced spiders. Additionally, some spiders have both book lungs and trachea. This type of respiration is what led to the massive size of the arthropods during the Carboniferous period. Because the respiration is passive, the tarantula or any arthropod's size will be limited by the amount of oxygen in the air. Arthropods can only get so large before they aren't able to draw enough oxygen to sustain themselves. With more oxygen in the atmosphere, it was much easier for them to get the oxygen they needed allowing them to grow to extreme sizes. Some researchers even theorize that the high levels of oxygen could have been toxic to the larva. So ancient arthropods began producing larger larva that took in less oxygen in relation to their body size. So bigger larva equals bigger adults. And here we are in the present day. With over a thousand identified species, tarantulas showcase remarkable adaptability. It's crucial to emphasize that the term primitive is used in an evolutionary sense and does not imply any form of inferiority. Tarantulas have successfully adapted to diverse environments over millions of years varying in size from smaller than a coin to as large as a dinner plate. 
and their primitive characteristics contribute to their distinctive biology and ecological roles. Due to the limited fossil record, there is still much that we do not comprehend about tarantula evolution and diversification. This underscores the need for further research and the importance of inspiring more people to delve into the study of spiders, especially tarantulas. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>